city, nationally and nationally. And unless we think as a majority people, unless we have the vocabulary, the terminology, the headset to move in that direction, it becomes very difficult to implement that power. And clearly what brings us together is a belief system that has survived in spite of all that we have gone through as a people. So call it whatever name you want, spirit force, God force, give it a name in terms of religion. It is what binds us. And we felt it important that as we enter a new decade, that we have an activity that marks our coming together, but also does something else, places us in the thinking process of being proactive about our reality because the vocabulary that is entering this decade is the vocabulary of inclusion, talking about people of color, but the practice of exclusion, because wherever we go, we're not in the majority, although we represent the majority. So that what we've done today is bring together people that we care about, and thank you for being here. Uh, and we have invited special guests throughout the afternoon who have helped us grow to where we are. The center next month, hopefully, uh, will own its building. And we will own it because you have helped us own it. We have owned it because people like Ambassador Franklin Williams, and I'd like to acknowledge his present councilman Rivera, Jose Rivera. You have to applaud him because he has been he's very shy. He doesn't like to come but he has been very key in always being there for us when we need support, when we need a voice. And I think that you have to uh, acknowledge people who don't do it because they want to scratch their chest. They do it because they know it's the right thing. And he has always done the right thing, so I thank him. I also thank the staff that has put this together and throughout the afternoon you will meet the staff because we have been very fortunate in bringing magical people together and I mean that in the sincerest way. We would not have been able to do what we do if people didn't care about what we do and care about us. And the man behind the videotape, Bobby Shepard, is one of the key supporters of the Caribbean Cultural Center because he has donated his services in documenting all of our experiences and the center has probably one of the most unique collections of videos, which include Machito, T. Roro, uh, Tito Puente, Celia Cruz, I mean, you name it, Rex Neville Ford. I mean, our leading scholars are on videotape because Bobby has donated his time to make sure we have quality TV, quality documentation. So I'd like to thank you. I thank all the people that have allowed us to get to where we are. And uh, I thank you for being here for celebrating with the Caribbean Cultural Center. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Baba Lorisha uh, John Mason, who has also been instrumental in allowing the center to get to where it is. John Mason. Before Europeans or West Africans commemorate in a new endeavor, which the beginning of the year definitely is, we sort of reflect when we take time to figure out what it is that we have to look out for, prepare for, and think about in the coming epic, the coming time. And every year, throughout the Yoruba world, and we're talking about a world inhabited by upwards of 150 million on the conservative side to as many as 200 million people who follow African traditional beliefs who follow African philosophic tenets that have been set down thousands of years in the past and continue to live today in the present. Well, every year throughout the Yoruba world, Yoruba's go and consult knowledge. They go and ask into their own culture, into their own library of information. They consult with, with God. They consult because we constitute God. We look at ourselves and say, what is it we need to know this year that we didn't know last year or would, that will help us move forward? Well, every year we get a different answer. Somewhat the same, but always different in, in texture, content, and form, and in terms of how it will be applied to what we do in that year. 
And a year is just a small slice of, a, of an evolutionary process which reaches on into infinity and comes out of infinity. So that this year, the, the proverb, or the odu, the place where, where knowledge was hidden from us, so that when we went and dipped our spoon, so to speak, or our fingers into the well, we came back with this proverb. And the proverb said, the good son received the blessings of both mother and father. And that sounds very enigmatic, doesn't it? It says, well, what do you mean by that, the good son? Well, you have to think of it this way. Uh, Billy Holiday once said, God bless the child that has its own. Because you might be a father and your mother might be rich. We come from rich cultures, but yet and still, if we don't produce our own wealth, if we don't produce our own means of sustaining ourselves, we can't rely on the fact that our ancestors were rich, that our fathers were rich, our mothers were rich. We must depend, we must look to that as an informational point, which then gives us something to strive against, to strive for. But if we don't produce our own wealth, and if we don't produce our own ability to sustain ourselves, then we're going to fail. And this is what the Odu of the Year speaks to us of. It says, the good son, so that we can be good children, but it doesn't, matter, it doesn't mean that you're going to survive. Goodness in itself is not a blueprint. Some of the best people in the world end up dead last. You must produce a system whereby you can create your own wealth, where you can create your own systems, your own schools. That for the Yoruba, this becomes very important because the problem with goodness, it says that we talk about the idea that no, there is no obstacle which not can not be overcome. If we understand the, 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 the uh, star that make up that obstacle, so that if you know that somebody is going to be your opposition, but that person likes chocolate cake, then you make a lot of chocolate cakes and invite them to your home. If you know that somebody likes to uh, drink, then you make sure that you have plenty of drink in your home when they come. Because even though they're, they're your implacable enemy, it's hard for somebody to, to hate you when they have your cake in their, and your drink in their mouth. So that for the Europe, it's a way of understanding how do we defeat something that seems indefeatable, something that seems insurmountable. You have to find out what it's made of, what is it like. And for that, you have to be educated. The, the, the idea of being intelligent is to be educated. You cannot conquer your enemy unless you, are, you know who your enemy is, internally as well as externally. So the Odu begins with this premise. You have to remember something. You can't believe that just being good is its own reward. Um, you have to understand that when people know what you like, then the things that happen in Nicaragua the things that are happening now in Panama can go on and nobody says anything. Why? Because they tell you what you want to hear, they tell you what you like. Irregardless of whether there's justice or injustice being perpetrated, the point is that somebody can come in and knock your house down and then tell the person next door, well, you know, they were a drug dealer, so it's all right for us to knock their house down. Well, then, you have to understand, being good is not the criteria. You have to have power also. And power means that you can't rely on mama and papa to, yes, our ancestors were great. That doesn't guarantee us that we're going to be great. It guarantees, it only gives us the blueprint, it only gives us, gives us the, the proper genes. Now we have to take those genes and put them in the proper context. If we don't create the environment, we don't create the institutions, they will not exist. And somebody will knock our house down and give us all kinds of good reasons why those houses have been knocked down. And we will accept it. You have to understand that, because the Odu, Odibe says that, how do you win? You win by giving people and women in song. These are the things that people want. And if you give them what they want, then they'll be lulled into a sleepiness. And sleepiness is what you use to defeat your enemy. So that in the, in the Yoruba world, to sleep is a sign of defeat. So that for the year, we must wake up. And it's not the idea of, that we can't love. Love is, is, is the vehicle for destruction. If you want, to, if I want to defeat my enemy, then I love them even more, because it, it's it through my love that I will find their their way of being brought down. Now, we're not talking about this in any animosity, any type of animosity. We're saying practically, if you want to win, then you must know who it is you fight against and what tools it is they employ and what are their 
particular likes and dislikes. You can't create institutions or societies be free of the of of this weakness, of this Achilles heel. So that's for the for the year. And then the other point <clears throat> that was brought up, um, every time we, we divine, we divine not only for the, the world, but we also divine for us. And for us, it said, for black people, that is, all colors of black people, it said, find the door closed, one must learn to fit under the sill. So that, what it means is, Nobody guarantees you an open door in this world. Nobody guarantees you that life will go smoothly. So that if you want to be able to succeed, don't cry about the door that's been closed, but create a new passageway. It calls for the ultimate flexibility. As I used to always say, I'm a diviner, and I tell, I tell people that come to me for divination, the world, the world doesn't need another self-righteous son of a bitch. All right? They're, they're useless. You might be right, but that doesn't make you a winner. If you're right, then find another way to win. If the door is closed, get under the sill. You must bow to the inevitable. Too often we stand and we cry about what wasn't done, that we paid the toll, the door should have been opened, the bridge should have been there, the bridge should have been raised, that we should have been able to pass. That doesn't guarantee anything because people will thwart your endeavor just by the fact that you were able to pay. So they said, oh, you had a dollar to pay? I'm still going to close the door anyway. So what do you do when you get to the door and find it closed? You don't cry. You get under it. You get over it. You go around it. The idea is flexibility. If we're not flexible, then we're going to be broken. Simple as that. Let's pray. Medium, and we'll return to this medium. So that Europeans, whenever they meet like this to, to share food, before they... Well, I know some of you have already started, but before we, uh, before we get too far into it, we always pour water because you're going to hear sacred music. You're going to hear classical music. And the music that's going to be played these are, is being played by classical musicians. Yomo Toro, Puntilla, Rios. These are classical musicians. They keep our classical culture alive. And if we think it's not, it's not folk culture as such. It's classical culture. It's thousands of years in the making, and it'll be a thousand years also in the, in the further development of. So that we have to keep this in mind that, that we're listening to classical music. We're listening to, we're looking at, we're going to see classical dance steps. We're going to hear classical singing. So that what I'm talking about are classical themes also. That this has been going on for a thousand, thousand years in the Yoruba world. This is not something that happened yesterday. So we're, we're, we're meeting today like they meet in Cuba, like they meet in Brazil, like they meet in West Africa, like they meet in Trinidad and Haiti. That wherever people meet at the beginning of the year, they meet to discuss what things we need to know in order to better prepare ourselves for the following. And so we begin with water. Omitutu, onatutu, anatutu, ile tutu, tutu laroye, tutu boko risha, tutu boko egu, kosi ku, kosi arun, kosi eyo, Cosi ofo, cosi edina, cosi akoba, cosi fitigo, cosi alaye, aiku babawa, mojuba lodu mari, mojuba bobo orisha, mojuba bobo ya losha, baba losha, oluo edile mi araye, bobo ya losha, baba losha, oluo edile aye, moju, mojuba, bobo egu, embelesh lodu mari, ibaru, mojuba, king kamashe, bobo ya losha, baba losha,
Yo soy la pina de oro, yo soy la pinita de oro. 
Camila, Laura.
Thank you. 
six alone. It's either spirit force, Orisha force, God force, and it's friends. And I'd like to acknowledge the presence of other friends that are here. Before I mention Councilman Rivera, who was instrumental in getting the center line item at the state. Uh, and I think we're the only organization, cultural organization, that has a line item called the Caribbean Cultural Center. And again, I want to acknowledge his presence and thank you. I say thank you to Bobby Shepard because the uh, documentation that we have not have done is unique and no one else has the collection in this planet that we have because of Bobby Shepard. And there are other people who are here that I want you to say thank you to. Um, as I said before, thank you for being here and sharing this afternoon with us. And in putting forth the new year, one of the things the center has decided to do is put into work a language of inclusion. Because as I said before, we talk about inclusion, but we don't practice inclusion. The people that are present here represent inclusion. Uh, it's a matrix, it's a paradigm of parity and equality for people of color and those people who have helped us in that journey. And it is not about allowing ourselves to be pitted against each other uh, by language. Latino means nothing. Uh, you're either European if you want, or you're white, or if you identify as a person of color, you're an African descendant. Uh, so that we have to be clear in the words that we use because those are the words that will develop the language of inclusion and the terminology that we need to use in the future. And clarify for ourselves and our young people who they are, where they are, and where they are in the time clock of time. And I just like to take a minute and have people wave so that you know some of the work and some of the cultural warriors, some of the uh, unity force that the center has been able to put together. Jane Delgado. Mario Balsam, <laughs> Rosalie Roman, Rosalie Roman, new member of our family, Barbara Gerard. We went to high school together, college together. <laughs> um, Angela Fontanez, Angela Fontanez, who's been with me since the beginning of the census work. Uh, Seneca Turner, bad brother I just yeah. met. of inclusion in terms of what they're doing with this conference, but also including the center and the presence of people of color in terms of what Somos Uno has to say to the Latino community. So I would like to acknowledge his presence and say thank you. And he is one of our honorees this evening. And if I can get uh, Laura, Laura or Marlene, <laughs> so I'll continue talking. Uh, so that, as I mentioned before, the language of inclusion means a redefinition of re-looking at. And one of the conversations that we will have to have and be upfront about is the conversation between Latino and African descendants, African Americans, because they're not different. It's the same conversation, but because we've been taught to perceive it differently, we fall into that language. And the reason I have to say it is because you know that the center is about the bringing together of all of our branches. And we don't want to get trapped into the language of exclusion because of the people of outside forces. So that we need the unity force, which is you, uh, to make sure that you use and you practice the language of inclusion because practice is key. And if we're ready? Yeah? Um, to Hector Diaz, we'd like to make a presentation. 
on the annual African Diaspora Award, which has been awarded to Councilman Rivera previously and Mario Balsa. And when we give an award of recognition, it doesn't mean only for the job done in the past. It means the responsibility of the future. Because as we become the majority population, we need people like him to use the language of inclusion. So we'd like to say thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, Martha, for giving me this beautiful um, recognition. Uh, many times you say, why do I get the recognition if I really haven't done so much? And I still think that I have a lot more to do. Uh, I thank you and thank the Lord for giving you and your center that vision that you have keeping our traditions alive and we must do that we must keep our language we must keep those beautiful traditions that were passed on from uh, our ancestors back in africa to uh, beautiful caribbeans and uh, don't know what else to say but thank you so much happy new year Another, another two friends. I see Manny Vega, another cultural warrior, Irving McManus, who has been with me since and so the Barrio, so that's a long time. So um, I'd like to continue with the program and thank you for hearing us out uh, with another friend, Yomo Toro, who has been participating in all that we have done throughout. Yomo Toro. Vamos a pasar un ratito del resto de la tarde que falta bien, 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 bien como digo yo, bien chévere. So, I want to say hello to everybody to be today. And I wish to have a very good uh, evening today. And very, very happy New Year. Nine. All right? From Puerto Rico, now.
play music strictly from one country or the other. I want to play Latin music. For me, because Latin music belongs to all the countries, right? To all the Latin countries and belong to the world. It's our music. And the music belongs to nobody and everybody. Right? So, <laughs> okay, I was, first I was in Rico, then I went to Cuba. And now I want to go to Santo Domingo. Now get ready. Get ready. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.